Hello, Internet! So nice to see you. Let's answer a few more of your music theory questions. Is it weird that I'm having more fun learning theory than learning songs? Well, no, it happens the same to me after all. I mean, I'm here explaining music theory and I'm a music theory nerd. But I find that you want to have a balance between the two things. So you want to learn some songs and some music theory, some songs and some music theory. Kind of a balanced musical diet. Because if you only study music theory and never play a song, you learn a lot, but you don't make much music. And you learn a lot also by making music. So you really want to do that. And vice versa, if you only learn songs and never understand the music theory, you're going to get a great repertoire, but you're never understanding what you're doing and how to write your own songs or how to learn songs faster. So get a balanced diet. But honestly, you're not weird. I'm pretty much the same. Given in a, in a given evening, if I have to choose between learning more songs or learning more music theory and writing my music, I'm definitely going for music theory and doing my music. I wonder if it would be useful to include don't do this examples of attempted modal interchanges that don't work. Maybe C major, F major, F minor, D7, because of the lack of voice leading. It's really hard to give examples on what not to do, because every time somebody finds something, an example on what not to do, somebody else finds a way to make it work. So, uh, I'm honestly not saying that anything is impossible here. So I'm not going to say don't do this, because I'm absolutely sure, absolutely 100% sure, that the moment I'm saying this is bad, one of you guys will find a way to play it and it will sound great. Let me give you an example here. I'm going to take the exact same um, example, chord progression, that Charles put in his comments. And by the way, I know for a fact Charles is a very competent musician. So ju just to show that, uh, those things happen, okay? But what he's saying is the chord progression is uh, C major 7th, uh, going to uh, F major 7, F minor, without the 7, then D7, okay? If I play those, I go to a G then, and then back to C. Let's say more than half of you will hear this and think uh, there is really nothing wrong with that. You wouldn't even under, uh, find uh, where the chord progression will sound awkward or something. Another half of you, though, will say that between that uh, F minor and the D7, there is a bit of a disconnect. But then I just need to rearrange those chord progressions if, you, if we really want to make it even smoother, we can re just rearrange the chord progression. And that's easy to do, especially if I add uh, a couple of ninths to the F chord. So I would play C major 7, F major 7 with a 9, F minor 7 with a 9, or F minor 9 if you want is the same thing, uh, and then D7. And then just by changing that little thing, G7, C major 7. So I just need to change a very little detail on the chord and um, everything now works, no problem. So again, it's really hard to say exactly what not to do. And if you notice, most of the music theory we do here on this channel, it's not uh, you shouldn't do this or you shouldn't do that. Most of the music theory we do here is is it possible to do this and it sounds great? But I never said anything about other things. There are other things that sound great too. Let's see what's possible. And what's impossible may only be temporarily impossible. Wow, just wow. Amazing secret revealed. That should be the title of this video. Thanks. Where were you 40 years ago, my friend? 40 years ago, I was probably still crawling in my crib, <laughs> okay? So, sorry if I couldn't be there, <laughs> okay? I'm doing my best, that's the fastest I could be here, okay? But, uh, thank you. Turn off the stupid background music, for God's sakes. What were you thinking, adding such nonsense to an educational video about music theory? You know, you, you are actually right. What was I thinking? You see, that's the thing. There was this period on YouTube where everybody was adding background music to their videos. And uh, so I did too, because honestly, I didn't know better. 
And the interesting thing is when I started adding background music to my videos, that's where my videos started to, went, to go viral and my channel started to really, really grow. And then, literally, one day from another, people started to not like the background music anymore. Literally, the day before, everybody liked it, or at least nobody said anything. And the day after, everybody started hating on the background music. And I can pinpoint the exact moment in time. This happened halfway through March 2019. Again, first half of March 2019, everybody was perfectly fine with the background music. And then second half of March 2019, everybody was absolutely hating the background music. So, when you guys told me to do that, I stopped. I am really sorry if I offended your delicate artistic sensitivity with background music on a music video. And if you write me, I will be personally um, responsible and I will make personally sure that you get a refund on your free videos. And what if all of that is just pure coincidence and wasn't Rachmaninoff's intention? So the question is, uh, if Rachmaninoff actually used the original Paganini's theme to write his own piece of music, and he did it on purpose, and it was not a coincidence. I don't think it's a coincidence for a very simple reason. The title of the piece of music we were talking about in that video, the title that Rachmaninoff gave that piece of music, it's Rhapsody on a Theme by Paganini. So it's in the title. Okay, not only that, but Rachmaninoff had several conversations about all that, especially on the variation that we talk about in the video, on how he was able, after several people before him, to create this variation. Because Rachmaninoff is not the first to compose something on a variation on that specific theme. There were several uh, other composers before him took that theme and wrote longish pieces of music. Rachmaninoff, though, was able to find one of the best variations out of that, and it became one of the most famous melodies in Hollywood history, for instance. It was reused in several movies. So, and he was really proud of that, of being able to find something new from something that was already written by another musician and revisited by several other musicians, too. So he was really proud of his originality in transforming something rather than writing it from scratch. So yes, we are actually sure that was not a coincidence. I'm 58 years old. Is it too late for me to learn guitar? No, it is not too late for you to start learning guitar. Um, I've been teaching people starting when they were well into their 80s, okay? And they became fairly good too, okay? It's all a matter of how much time you have to dedicate to the instrument and how much fun you have. But it is never too late to start playing guitar if you have fun doing it. Hey, Tommaso. I don't know if I can ask something here, but is there any tips about being able to play correctly when I'm recording? Man, I just can't. Camera off, awesome. Camera on, garbage. Help. Hello, Internet. I'm going to answer your question. Wait. Hello, Internet. So nice to see you. I'm going to answer all your questions today and now. Maybe the same, but different. Yes, yeah, I know, I know. More, more of the same, but different. Phrasing. Yeah, phrases. <laughs> and I keep answering them. Let's answer a few more. Yeah. Okay. Ha. I totally shared the same problem with you. And indeed, one thing you guys don't see, well, every now you see it actually, but one thing you guys mostly don't see is how many times I am recording those videos because I get stuck halfway through a sentence and we have to scrap the video, okay? So, or how many times sometimes I play an example because uh, I get stuck with, with my fingers between the strings and all this kind of thing. And this happens only when the camera is on. The moment we turn the camera off, I can play perfectly. It's maddening, I know. So, but how can we avoid all that? Well, I'm not sure if we can avoid that completely, okay? But definitely, you can get used to it. So my recommendation for you would be that. Start recording all your practices. Every time you practice guitar, start recording. So get used to just play, make mistakes, goof around, play your exercises, and record it. You don't even have to listen to the recording. Just have your uh, computer record or your phone record what you're doing and have this red light in front of you. And before you know, it's gonna get easier and easier and easier. The more you do it, the easier it gets. And that's 
really the thing, okay? There are no special uh, Jedi mind tricks that we can use. It's just getting used to it, like several other things. It's like playing on stage. Somebody has to shove you on stage first, but once you're there, you get used to play on stage, and you start to have a lot more fun.